Hey guys, this is Brittany from Just Be Crafty. In today's tutorial, I will be showing you how to make this adorable beach house dishcloth. This pattern and tutorial is great for any complete beginner or longtime knitter just looking for a quick and fun colorful project. In this tutorial, I'll show you exactly how to cast on your stitches, complete the knit stitch that makes up garter stitch, as well as casting the project off of your needles. Please see the description box below for a complete list of materials for this project and links to the free pattern on my blog as well as a printable copy that can be purchased from my Etsy shop. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you haven't already, please be sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell so that you never miss a new knitting or crochet tutorial. Without further ado, let's jump into the pattern. Using your main color, we'll begin by casting on 33 stitches. Start with a slip knot and secure onto your needle. If you need help with making a slip knot, see the link in the description box below where I have a tutorial on how to do that. Holding the needle in your right hand, your tail should be lying towards the left and your working yarn attached to your yarn ball should be lying towards the right. Touch your thumb and your pointer finger and insert between the tail and the working yarn. Use your three remaining fingers to grab the tail and the working yarn together. You should be applying a bit of tension. The yarn should feel secure around your thumb and pointer finger. Swing your needle around and up through the loop on your thumb. Swing over and down through the loop on your pointer finger, then down and back through the loop around your thumb. Pull tight to secure. I'll show you again. Swing needle around and up through the loop on your thumb and over and down through the loop on your pointer finger, then down and around and back through the loop on your thumb. Pull tight to secure. It's important to note here that you don't want to pull too tight. You want to apply an even tension so that way you can glide your cast on stitches back and forth pretty easily across your needle. If you don't and you pull your stitches too tight, knitting your first row will be a complete nightmare. So go ahead and keep repeating until you have 33 total cast on stitches on your needle. And just remember that the first slip knot counts as your first, um, your first cast on stitch of your 33 total. So go ahead and pause here and meet me back up once you have your completed number of cast on stitches. I also wanted to note that you can make this dishcloth as big or as small as you want. My finished piece is about 8 inches by 8 inches, but you can cast on any amount, more or less, to make it bigger or smaller. Once you have your desired amount of stitches, go ahead and meet back up with me and we'll complete our dishcloth. Okay, so at this point you should have all of your cast on stitches on your needle. You'll have a little tail hanging, hanging over, and that's great. You'll weave that in later. Turn your work and hold your needle with the cast on stitches in your left hand, holding the second needle in your right. Okay, so insert into the stitch on your needle from front to back. Hold both needles in your left hand and being careful to hold your tail tight and out of the way, use your right hand to wrap working yarn around the back of your right needle. Then slide needle under the yarn you just wrapped and slide the stitch off of your needle. I'll show you a couple more times. So insert your needle from front to back, wrap your working yarn around your back needle, and then slide under that loop you just made and slide the stitch off of your needle. So again, insert your needle from front to back, wrap your working yarn around your needle, and then back under through that loop you just wrapped and slide the stitch off of the needle. And you just keep repeating this process until you reach the end of your row. And right here I'm going to show you, or the next stitch rather, yeah this stitch, I'm going to show you um, what the top view of it looks like when you're knitting a stitch, just to get another visual. So you just slide that stitch off of your needle. So if you want to go ahead and pause here and then meet me back up once you've completed your first row. Okay, so we've now completed our first row. 
All rows of this pattern will be done in the knit stitch, and when both the front and the back of a work are knitted in the knit stitch, the fabric formed is called garter stitch. Garter stitch is a reversible fabric, meaning it's the same on both the front and the back. Because the starting edge of this first row differs slightly, I prefer to have the even rows be marked as the back side and the odd rows marking the front side. See, so you can see the difference. This is row one, so an odd row, and you can see that edge. And then this will, this will be starting row two, and you can see how that edge differs slightly. Okay, so now for row two, your work should be turned and you should be holding your needle with all the stitches in your left hand, and your empty working needle should be in your right. You'll be repeating the knit stitch in each stitch for all rows. So from this point forward, keep working the knit stitch back and forth in rows until your piece measures about five and three quarter inches from your cast on edge ending after completing a row that was on the back side of your work. Okay, so you can go ahead and pause here and meet back up with me once your piece measures about five and three quarter inches. At that time, you can also go ahead and cut your yarn leaving about a six inch tail. All right, so your piece should be about five and three quarter inches. Insert your working needle into the stitch as you normally would and hold the tail tight and out of the way. Take your contrasting color and loop around your working needle with the contrasting color tail towards the back. Complete the knit stitch as normal holding both tails tight. These first couple stitches are going to be a little bit awkward to work, but just try to hold the new color as tight as possible so that the new stitches don't come loose. We're going to knit a few more stitches. And now we're going to tie those two loose ends together to make the piece even more secure. I suggest to not tie these too terribly tight, but just enough to secure. No double knot needed here. All right. So now that our yarn is all secure, we can keep knitting across the row. You'll keep working back and forth with your contrasting color until your entire piece measures about eight inches. Go ahead and pause here and meet back up with me once you've completed knitting all your rows, making sure that you end on the back side of your work. And then we will go over how to cast off. Point, knitting is completed and we're ready to cast off. With the front side of the work facing you, begin your cast off by knitting two. So knit one, knit two. You now have two knit stitches on your working needle. You'll then slide your needle into the first stitch on your working needle. And you will pull that over the second stitch and up and off of your needle. You'll knit into the next stitch. You'll insert your needle into that first knit stitch and slide it over the second and off of your needle. You'll keep repeating that process across the entire row. Tension here is important to note. You want to have as even tension as possible so that way you have a smooth top. If you pull the yarn too tight, the top of your project will be smaller than the rest of it. And if you pull too loose, it'll appear larger than the rest of your project. You want to have a tension that will make the top edge lie flat in relation to the rest of the project. So keep repeating the process of knitting one and sliding that first stitch up and over the second and off your needle. 
Go ahead and pause here and meet up with me once you get to your last couple stitches. All right, so at this point we're almost done. I'm just completing um, my last two cast off stitches. So sliding that over the first stitch. And now this is my last one. Like the rest of these, we're going to slide that first stitch over the second and you'll be left with one stitch left on your needle. At this point, you can go ahead and cut your yarn and you'll pull that tail through the loop on your needle and pull it tight to secure. So yay, we're almost done. Next stop is weaving in our ends. Grab your yarn needle and we're going to flip our work over so the back side is facing us. With your yarn needle, thread your tail into the needle. Then weave through nearby rows of your work. I like to go up through a few rows and then back down the other way. I do this about three or four times to make sure the tail is really secure. Be careful not to pull too tight because you don't want to bunch up your work. Complete this process for all of your remaining tails. All right, so all tails are weaved in, and this is the back side of your work. And this is your finished dishcloth. If you found this tutorial helpful, please be sure to give the video a thumbs up, and if you haven't already, please subscribe and hit the bell so you can be notified whenever I share a new video. Enjoy your new dishcloth. Thank you so much for watching.